everybody it's me the nitty gritty yarn girl it is monday and this is twisted stitches i hope you all had a great week i know we certainly did here we've been working really hard getting our studio all organized and set up for tonight's show it's been an amazing week here at nitty gritty yarn girl i want to thank everybody for their for their orders of course and for the great communications we've had all week and for helping us get to 1700 fans thank you very much we are on our way to 2000 i would love to see that happen before we're out of quarantine and i think we might be able to make that happen for sure hey we've uh we've got a really oh, really special great. guest with us tonight um it's been a very interesting week getting to know susan gibbs of juniper moon farm Hey, an amazing story to share with everyone. And um, I'm going to just turn the the evening over to her for a little bit and have a slight conversation with her while you all learn about Jennifer Moon Farm. Susan, are you there? I am. I am. Thank, thank you for having me. Oh, and thank you for being here with us. We've got some great fashions to show everyone um, with all the fantastic fibers from Juniper Moon Farm. But I thought it would be really nice for you to share your story with uh, the folks out there because you're such an icon in the fiber world. And it would be great to know more about how you got your beginnings and how you got to where you are today. Sure, sure. Um, I, uh, let's see, where do I start? I was living in <laughs> California and I was about to move to New York City and my ex-husband and I were on, he was my husband at the time, were on a trip and um, we went into a bookstore and I saw a book called Barnyard in Your Backyard. It was about raising sheep in your backyard and I started, I, as soon as I saw this book, I said, I think I'm going to have sheep. Wait a and minute, you, weren't, you had nothing to do with farming at the time? Nothing. No, I was a network news producer, and my um, my then husband was a on-air correspondent for network oh, news. Oh, wow. So, okay. And we were moving to, to Manhattan, and um, as soon as I saw this book, I just thought, like, that, this is what I'm going to do. I, I just knew instantly that I was going to raise sheep. And um, <laughs> my husband said, you're, you're not going to raise sheep because we're moving to Manhattan. Our stuff was already on the moving van. Like we were moving. And I said, you know, like green acres. I said, you know what? I think I am though. I feel like I'm gonna have sheep. So um I bought the book and we moved um to Manhattan and we had um put offers on a couple of apartments and they kept falling through for whatever reason. And after we'd been there for about six months, I said, you know what, I think I think we need to start looking at farms. And we started looking and within a year of seeing that book on the shelf we had bought a farm and i had bought my first four sheep so <laughs> see honey, um, i'm the only person who makes snap decisions <laughs> honestly i am my husband my current husband um this one's a keeper uh he is very much a researcher he finds out everything about everything and i just go with my gut and i just knew i was gonna have sheep now i had petted sheep at a petting zoo, but I had never <laughs> done anything else with sheep. And I didn't know how to knit at the time. Oh, um, say. Knew nothing about sheep, but I bought four sheep and I just set out to learn about it. And the thing about farmers and, and shepherds is they're very generous with their information. And when you need help, when you ask for help, they, they are willing to help you. Um, so I was very lucky. Um, I was living in the Hudson Valley and there's quite a few small, um, small animal farms, uh, there, although at the time it wasn't so much for sheep and wool. Um, but so I, I just sort of stuck with it and, and figured it out. Um, and they were, you know, I, I, they were basically pets at that point. They were pretty much self-taught though. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. percent. Um, and then I, when I got divorced from my first husband, all of a sudden I needed to find a way to either make the sheep pay for themselves or um, get rid of the sheep. Like there was, you know, it was just costing me, it was a very, very expensive hobby, let's say. Um, so the problem with having a small flock of sheep for yarn is that it costs more to mill the yarn 
than you could sell it for, right? Uh -huh. So like, uh -huh. you know, you'd spend a thousand dollars milling this yarn and you, you know, that you could maybe sell for $300. Wow. Right. So those are the realities that people don't realize when they decide they want one or two sheep. And when I had four sheep that were from my own, you know, just for my own pets, that was fine. I didn't mind paying that because that yarn was very special to me. But when I needed to make it into a business, um, first of all, I needed a lot more animals. And then I needed to find a way to make um, to make it profitable. And I just honestly, I, the stars just aligned. And I was very lucky. And um, Ravelry started almost the same time I started my business. Ravelry was just getting started. Uh -huh. And um, I, what I realized was the reason I was willing to pay that much for yarn from my four sheep originally was because those sheep were special to me. They were my sheep. And I wanted to knit from my sheep. And I realized right. if we could give other people that experience, they would be willing to pay a little more for their wool if they knew where it was coming from. Right. So that was the idea. And um, we started the first yarn CSA in the world where people would buy a share and um, follow along with the flock, you know, for a year, get to, with, you know, see the lambs being born, come for shearing day if they wanted to. And then when the yarn came back from the mill, we would send them their share. And the idea just really took off. Um, people got what I was trying to do immediately. Um, and it just, you know, it, it just, I think we were, I, I mean, I worked very hard, but I also think, you know, I had a lot of things going for me. So did you dye the yarn as well? In the beginning we did. We did. We would get the yarn back from the mill and then we would do all the dyeing. We usually did four colorways per season. Okay. And okay. everyone got to pick if they wanted um their yarn dyed or if they wanted to keep it natural. Um and it was they you know, it's funny because people would say like, oh, you get all this money up front. And and it's true. Um, that money went to pay for feed and hay and all those things. But then when the yarn came back, it was such a tremendous amount of work all at one time. Yeah. Because we had to divide yeah. everything up and then we had to dye it and then we had to ship it. And it was like two or three full weeks of just nonstop, all hands on deck. All of my friends would come and spend a week at the farm and volunteer and help and and it was really crazy, but honestly, it was just the right idea at the right time. And after um, we put our shares on sale, I think in October, the following um, April, I was on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. And wow. yes, <laughs> and things just grew and grew and grew from there. And it's kind of been nonstop since then. Wow. So now do you still have the farm? We, we still have the sheep. They're retired now. Um, we're not making yarn from our own flock anymore. Um, first of all, we couldn't keep up with demand. Um, we could have sold, you know, in order to keep up, we would have had to have run about 10,000 sheep in order to keep up with demand. Wow. And that was, first of all, it was not something I really wanted to do. Um, it's a little bigger we, farm than you were hoping for, huh? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and that would mean not having a personal relationship with my sheep. Um, and that wasn't what I wanted. Um, so unless you're in the West, you, you just can't have that many sheep. Right. Um, right. So at about the same time when we were starting to outgrow our, our space, um, we... Uh, it was just sort of, again, like right place, right time. Um, Knitting Fever, who is the brand, um, they ha who they distribute for Debbie Bliss and Noro and a lot of big, big yarns. Um, they were kind of looking to get into the indie space because indie dyeing was becoming a big thing. And right. Right. I was trying to find a way um, to not have to do quite so much physical labor. <laughs> Um, so we kind of struck up a deal and it, honestly, it was the best thing I've ever done. Um, yeah, well, they're a great organization too, to work with. They're, they're really good. You know, they have some amazing yarns and they know what they're doing. Um, they knew what, they had a lot of knowledge that as a farm yarn maker, I just didn't have. Uh, uh -huh. Plus they have this amazing distribution network because they are in stores all over the world. Correct. Uh, yes, and. 
honestly, we have, I've had the best relationship with them. Um, it was the smartest, probably the smartest business decision I ever made. Um, and so now I'm the creative director of our commercial lines. And we do um, two collections a year, um, a spring, summer, and a fall, winter, along with patterns to go with the new yarns and with new colors of existing yarns. And um, it's honestly, I, I really can't believe they paid me to do this. Well, it's it's a great relationship, and um, and they're lucky to have you, and it's and it works really well together. And so we've got some amazing uh, fashions, and some of the yarn and in the yarn set um, are from Juniper Moon Farm. So mm -hmm. if I could take a few minutes and talk about that, are there some questions? Before that, comments? we've got a couple of comments. We have yeah. Jeff Grill saying hi, Paulette. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, let's see what else we have here. A bunch of folks on. That's great. I had to scroll up. Hold on. We had some comments while we were chatting. Okay. Knitting fever and your yarn says, oh, you're making us blush. <laughs> <laughs> and Jody Long says, hey, Paulette and Susan. Ah, hey, Jody. Hi, Jody. Anna Maria says, hi, Paulette. Hello, Anna Maria. It's great to have you on. This lady, Anna Maria, Susan, to give you an idea, we did 15 shows in one weekend when Stitches United was canceled, and Anna Maria was on 15 shows with us. It was amazing. I don't oh know if God. anybody else was. I don't know how many people were, but she was always there and always commenting, and we oh, appreciate it. Oh, that's wonderful. So much. Yeah. That's Andrea funny. Booth says, expensive hobbies, question mark. All of us have been there. It really boils down to passion and hard work. How wonderful to hear this. Yes. Yeah. Well, we all have expensive hobbies. I, I You know, I thought when I decided I was going to open a mobile yarn shop, uh, Paul would just lose it. And, and he kind of he held me off for a couple of years because I wanted to retire from my corporate career as well. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I waited for a little while and it was like, oh, no, 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 let's not do this. Let's not do this. And then all of a sudden I said, I'm doing it. And I'm so <laughs> glad I did. And it is, you know, it, yarn shops are it, it's it's there's a, there's a passion that you have. And when you have a passion, whatever it is you do, whether it's owning a yarn shop or owning your own farm or whatever it is, when you have a passion, that passion comes through in everything that you do. And I think that's that's really the most one of the most important things. And um, if I can share a little story, speaking of passion and and customers, I had an experience this weekend with a kit that someone purchased from Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl, and I sent the kit out, and um, you know, with all my little samples and things that I that I put in with my with my packaging. And I got an email from the customer who was very disappointed because she was having a hard time understanding the pattern. And that there was just no way that she was very disappointed with her purchase and she would never buy from our store again. And that was the, that was the story. And having a passion for what I do, I wasn't about to let that go. And so I took the time to connect with the person and, and literally sent I cut and pasted and cropped images along with instructions to help her better understand the pattern because I wanted her to enjoy what she was doing. And my, my ethics will not allow me to just let someone walk away disappointed until I know I've done everything I possibly can for them. And so it may be a hobby to a certain extent when we own a business when it's something that we love, especially with crafting and in and, and, and a, a farm, just because you wanted to own your own sheep. I don't know if you thought it would get there. Did you have a vision, Susan, when you started as to what you wanted it to, to be in the end? Honestly, my, I wanted to make, um, I wanted to make yarns that were soft and lovely and I wanted to um, have a no-kill farm. Um, that, that was, my those were my two goals um and i was told over and over again that that's not possible um because what are you going to do with all the boy lambs and you know no one's going to pay for it no <laughs> can pay what that yarn really cost and whatever and i i think that you know any every
everybody can say no. Um, not everybody can find a way to make it work. And I think right. that is what right. sets entrepreneurs apart from other people. There was just no way I was going to allow myself to fail. I mean, I guess ultimately if I, if I did, I would have known when I got there, but as long as there was something I could be doing, I was going to do it. And, and Paula, you and I have talked and you know, I feel very passionately about local yarn shops. Um, uh -huh. yes. As yeah. far as I'm concerned, local yarn shops are like libraries, right? So it's That's a resource. A comparison. It is. It's a resource. And if we don't use that resource and we don't make sure it's there for us, who are you going to go to when you've got a pattern that you just can't figure out? You know, yes. how are you going to learn that new technique? Who's going to bring Debbie Bliss or whoever, you know, to Topeka? We need those local yarn shops. And that's why I think it's really important for people to, um, especially now while, you know, this pandemic's going on, it's really important to support your local yarn shop. Paulette is not going to let you not finish that sweater. <laughs> that's correct. That is exactly right. Because the end of the story was, yeah. she was very pleased. And she and she 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 did a complete 180 on that, and you know changed her mind completely. And and you know you might not enjoy a pattern, and you might not love working that pattern, but that doesn't mean that the, the that we're not here to help you work through it. Exactly. And that and I'll help people. I'll do FaceTime because I've got customers all over the country, mm -hmm. and I don't want them to feel like once they purchase something okay. from here. From, from Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl, yes, mm -hmm. and even in Canada. As a matter of fact, that person was from Canada. He is from Canada. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they purchase something from me, I'll FaceTime with them. I'll do a Zoom call. I'll call them. Because people people hear and learn differently. So however I can help to get the message across to them and the information across to them is what I'm going to do. We have a couple well, of comments. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Stephen Roshan says, so cool. And... Gina says hi. Hi, Gina. It's Gina from Knitting Fever, by the way. Oh, hey, Gina. <laughs> um, I was doing an interview with the German yarn magazine this week, and we were talking about how, um, you know, the we're all making garments or whatever we're knitting, but the thing is, you spend a lot more time making that garment than you are ever going to spend. What I'm, somehow I'm moving. Than you're ever going to spend wearing it, right? What That's am I doing? Right. I'm moving in the wrong. There we go. Okay. So I think that you're right. It can get frustrating in the middle of your net. But when someone like you is willing to say, hey, get on FaceTime, hold it up, show me what you're doing. Let me see if I can help right. you fix it. Right. Um, right. It really, it, it turns that experience around. And yeah, you're going to have that yarn in your hands for a lot longer than you're actually going to wear it outside. So anything you can do to make that experience more pleasant and enjoyable. And I would also say when you're learning a new skill, you know, whether it's a new stitch or a new technique, you know, it, there's always a little bit of pain involved. There's always, you know. That's right. If, and if don't you, be afraid to call and ask for help. That's why we're here. That's exactly. Stephen Rochin says, I'm watching in New York City and my sister is watching in Houston, Texas. Wow. And Gina says to say hi to Susan as well. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> very interesting. Now, um, Stephen, how did your new sister learn about Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl? I'd be very curious to hear about that. And while we're waiting for Stephen to answer, you know, you talk, we were talking about the amount of time that you put into knitting something. Mm -hmm. Can you just back up for a second, Paul? I want to just show the folks this beautiful, beautiful sweater that's knitted with uh, Juniper Moon Farm Santa Cruz. This is an organic wool. And um, I've made a couple of things using this wool. I've knitted a few things. But look at the detail on this. And the, um, the, you know, the cabling is beautiful. I just love it. And and the shape on the garment is really very, very pretty. And uh, just before the show, Susan, you and I were talking about how no matter what the season is, we always seem to keep to, to find a, a use for some of our, our winter or warmer clothes. And, you know, sweaters are never out of style. There's always that cool night. And especially well, right now, if you I go don't know if we're ever going to get some more summer clothes. Mm -hmm. No, I, and then when you go back to your office, it's going to be cold in there. It always is. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And what I really love about this, I, I I paired this up tonight with a scarf that we that we knitted from Subami. This is our twisted stitches scarf. Oh, nice! And, uh, or shawl. And we put that. I just put that together. I thought, oh, these two look so pretty. I love combining fibers and textures. Stephen said his sister learned about you from him. Oh, he 
do. <laughs> really? Well, thank you, Stephen. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you both watching. Yes. Yep. So um, some of the other yarns that, uh, that we have here and some of the fashions that we have, um, the Patagonia is another organic merino, and that's the, the DK weight. And this is really a sweet yarn, and I've also worked with that one. I'm just trying to see if there's somebody else another question. Stephen says, I know you from one of my friends who thinks you are the best. Well, that's great, Stephen. I'm glad your friends think I'm the best because I think they are the best too. I hope to uh, find out who they are. This is one of the beautiful, I love this poncho. Isn't that great? This is just the prettiest thing. And this is this is knitted with Patagonia. That cabling is beautiful. Yeah, isn't it? It is. We were talking on one of the shows about cables and how no a, a cable is not just a cable. There are so many different cables. And, and um, I just love the work in this one. And look at this Santa Cruz. Look at that. I love the I love the the models that uh, that we have. That's my color. I think that Kay, if I may need to send that one to me when they're done, <laughs> when they're done with it. We'll have to check that up with somebody else. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a great one. And um, one more in the winters that I really love. And and when we first when I first got in my Juniper Moon Farm um, supply my yarns, this was probably the most popular sweater that uh that i posted it was just absolutely fantastic and i'm trying to find the name of it and oh here it is let's see it's this is the hella sweater okay that sweater is such like that is what i would call peak juniper moon farm it's slightly feminine but not girly you can wear it with jeans. You can wear it as an everyday. You can wear it, dress it up, and wear it out at night. Like that is what that's that is hits right in the sweet spot of what our designs try to be. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think I paired this up with a nice necklace the other day when I put my commercial out for the show. Oh, I nice. really, <laughs> I really did love this. It's really very very lovely. So those are just some of the winter things. But now that we're coming into the warmer weather at some point in our lives. Um, the the summer fashions and i am just a big fan of zooey mm -hmm. and i just i love this i i'm a big linen fan and also cotton i don't know mm -hmm. why I, you know i i love i love summer winter fashions are nice and warm and snuggly but there's something about linen that's crisp and it just makes me feel pressed and 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 feeling good about summer so zooey is one of my favorite yarns for for working with the summer this if, is a if, linen and cotton blend. If, if you're a person who doesn't knit for summer if you knit all the time for winter give it a try you will love this yarn it's got a really nice feel it softens um as you knit with it and it softens as you wear it but it also doesn't yep. hurt your hands in the way that knitting with a pure cotton would you know sometimes you get that joint pain and um or pure linen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or pure linen. And it's just a really <laughs> lovely combination of the two. That yarn has been um has been a real workhorse for us since we introduced it. Yeah, and then there's also the um the Zooey Dappled, which has a combination of colors mm -hmm. in it too. You know, I mean just look how pretty. And I'm actually wearing a shawl that's knitted with Zooey Dappled. And then we've got a couple of great fashions here this is a great sweater down on the end look how pretty this is i just love this so it does it does oh here's the name let me see what it say multi wrap cardigan because you can wear it in so many different ways exactly and it's great for summer it's a great sweater to just throw on and you know as a, as, a, as it's cool you can wrap yourself in it mm -hmm. or you can just leave it open really very very pretty well, and all the Zoe pieces, Paulette, are very classic. Like they're specifically with Zoe, I feel like they're going to last you and be in your wardrobe for years and years and years and years. Uh -huh. They just have really classic lines. They're not, um, you know, they're stylish, but they're not trendy. Right. Well, talk about classic. You know, this is this little sweater set's adorable. And this is Tia. And just so it's got a little sleeveless sweater, a little tank under it. Mm hmm. And then the, you know, the sweater over the top. Perfect, you know, if you're going out on a, you know, shopping or whatever in the summer. Just great. 
Yeah, I'm a big fan of dress it up, dress it down. Yep, yep, exactly. exactly. And and by the way, when I when I finish a sweater and I'm in love with the sweater, I will wear that sweater every day for three months. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my husband when I cook something he likes. <laughs> I just eat until it's gone. <laughs> my kids are like, "Oh, is that your uniform now?" <laughs> so we, yeah, I was trying yeah. a new way to wear it every single day. <laughs> well, that. <laughs> well, yeah, you just keep putting. Put, if you pair it with something else, it looks totally different. Exactly. <laughs> Plus, I don't see yeah, the. And you feel good wearing it. <laughs> yep. Yep. You feel good wearing it. Exactly. So, exactly um, right. We, how, are we on, how are we on time, Paul? I just want to make sure. Four and a half minutes. Okay. Um, so before we we start wrapping things up, I just, I want to just, there are a couple more things I wanted to show. And this one over here, um, I love the little pattern on this this shawl. This is a z the Xenia wrap. And I love the fan work on the bottom, the little lace work there. So it's got, it's it's a garter stitch. And it's got a nice flare on the end with some some design work, some lace work. Very, very pretty. So that's another one of the Zooey, the, that's another Zooey Dapple. So we've got a great variety of yarns and patterns for you um, using the Juniper Moon Farm yarns and, and brand that you'll see throughout the store and on our website. There'll be more and more coming up there. Uh, just trying to keep it all, keep it all moving as fast as as the shows come, and uh, and make sure we have enough things up posted for you. If you if you see something on the show and we haven't gotten it online yet, please don't hesitate to call us because we're more than happy to help you put things together uh, to create a kit for you. Or if you see yarn that's in a kit, but you that you want to buy yarn for some, that yarn for something else. Let us know. We kit things because it's easier for people. People really do enjoy the kits because they don't have to think about what am I going to do with this and how am I going to make that work? So, you know, we're more than happy to, to customize something for you if, if you have a need or a desire. And speaking of customizing, don't forget it's Mother's Day is coming in two weeks before you know it. Mother's Day will be here. So let's not forget about um, mom. You don't, with nitty gritty yarn girl, you don't just have to buy yarn if your mom or your wife, your, your whoever, your significant other is a knitter. You can always, you can always get them a knittable arrangement. These again are custom made. Look we at have that. the website. Sorry. I said, look at that. It's so cute. <laughs> so this is, this is just a combination of uh, two different, Two different yarns and one is a kit that i took and put into there um the ombre shawl and then some some uh, indulgence sport to go with it you let us know what mom or, or or what what your mother's day recipient likes to knit and we're more than happy to customize something for her you've seen that one before um this is just an idea not every not every knittable arrangement is a bouquet some of them are put together, um, you know, in different arrangements. I sent one off this past week that had so many yarns in it, I couldn't put it into a, into a stem bouquet, but that's another idea. And we also have the Likey Needles. I don't know if there's a knitter out there who would not love to have a set of Likey Interchangeable Needles. These are, and these are the new Grove designs and they're just gonna. I, I was speaking to a customer today in um, in Virginia. We had a great conversation about these, and she's she you know she wasn't sure if she was gonna buy individuals or the kit, and she said, you know what, I just want the kit. It's gonna be perfect for me. So, uh, Carolyn, your kit's on its way to you. You'll you'll have that soon. And thank you uh, for your order. I really do appreciate that. So I think we're about ready to wrap up another show. Uh, Susan, thank you so, so very much for being here with us. It's such an, you have such an interesting story and um, I enjoyed hearing it. And I'm sure that our, our folks did as well. Well, it was delightful and I will come on anytime. If somebody cancels at the last minute, I'm going to be right here sheltering in place. You just give me a call. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. And thanks everybody for tuning in. Don't forget, go to our website, www.nittygrittyyarngirl.com. Like us on Facebook, 
share this with your friends and don't forget have a great week and happy knitting we'll see you all next week thanks so very much <laughs>